The session here is new product launch on a shoestring. We're gonna talk about it from the marketing angle. Hopefully this will be a round table discussion and you'll all get involved. So you may wanna move a little bit closer to the front and make it a little bit more intimate and friendly. Don't be a shy person or afraid to stay away in the back there. A little bit more about me. I actually am a resident of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ooh. I'm a Viking fan, yes. But, but you might be able to convince me to become a Falcons fan because I am planning a move to the Atlanta area shortly. I am looking for a role in, in product marketing when I'm not helping Jason's land product camp. So come talk to me later if you have any advice or suggestions on that front. But I want to start this presentation with a question. Who does big product launches? Who's got big budgets? Quick hand raise. One. Big budget. Oh, wait a minute. Hand went down. Big budget. So, so everyone, maybe it's an economic thing. Everyone is trying to do product launches on a budget. Some, that means cheaper than they used to do it. Some means free. I don't want to spend any money. What I'm hoping will come out of this session is a shared collective of ideas, best practices, and what works in product launch that's effective because technology's changed certainly. Does anybody remember the old days of product launch yesterday, last week, last month, last year, five years ago? The good old days, right? That was five years ago, wasn't it? Anybody remember? We had big budgets to launch products. Remember when Apple or Microsoft would do a product launch? It was huge, the goal was to make a splash. Anybody do a big party, big launch event, launch at a trade show or have a separate hotel suite? Anything creative to get the word out went. Anybody have any creative ideas they used to, in the old days for product launch? Go ahead, you can shout it out. Oh, I didn't mean, it would take me too long to think of all of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Go ahead. I was launching a um, new telephone company, and we used, um, this was a long, long time ago, and, then, and we used uh, the doves that returned back home, but we delivered them to all the media. Oh, Wait, wow. What a cool idea, uh, doves that come yeah, back. What a splash of some memorable. Coming Wow. So those days, you agree they're largely gone. What's, what's changed? It's about the money. It's about the budget. What budget? Does anybody still have a big budget? So how's it changed? Any car fanatics? Anybody recognize what this is? It's a Buick from 54, I think. So a few years ago. But in the old days, I used to print up gads and gads of literature. Printed by a real printer, not on a photocopier in the office. <laughs> Anybody create launch packages, folders, or binders, GBC binding, and mail them out via FedEx next day to our important customers? Yeah. <laughs> Big launch parties, maybe with a golfing theme and lots of trinkets and trash giveaways, PR campaigns. Trade show events, the separate special suite you had to be invited to for your launch. It was awesome. And sales, you had a new product, you had to kick it off to your sales team, jazz them up, get them excited in a cool location, and tell them about the great money they were going to earn, the spiffs and all. And best of all, sales would get to go to places like Cancun or Florida or maybe even... Singapore on, on junkets and tr special trips just to learn about our products. They would still do it that way. Has it changed for anybody? Just a little bit, maybe? Yes. Different type of car. A little bit more recent. Now we post PDF files and say, sales, yeah, you can print that off yourself in your home printer or in your home office. <laughs> We send out HTML emails. Does anyone still do direct mail? A couple people, one or two maybe. Sales, they, they print out the emails and give them to customers maybe even. Instead of lavish parties, you get bakery treats in the office on Friday, right? 
Email announcements, no more lavish announcements. They just, little email with flash or this is important in the subject. Instead of getting the sales group together for training, we do e-learning. And sales, instead of going to Singapore on vacation, they get to win points. And if they're lucky, they get a valuable prize off the website catalog. <laughs> and we use social media. So anybody recognize this family? <laughs> trinkets at trade shows used to be the big thing. Go collect as many trinkets as you can. We used to send out fax blasts daily and receive so many of them, it would get annoying. Yes. A private briefing day just for the analyst groups and the media to learn about our products. New product? New t-shirt. That was Apple's motto, I think, for a while. Whenever they did a new development project, right? Gotta have a t-shirt, or else it's not a real project. Important customers, we want to make sure they adopt our product. So you, Mr. Important Customer, for you it's free. It's free, right? That's the way it used to be. And we would do a lot of surveying using expensive third-party firms to make sure our customers were satisfied. How can we get our customers to be even more satisfied? Just changed a little bit? Anybody recognize this family? <coughs> Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Now, we can have a chance to win an iPod or some other smaller item for filling out a web survey. Everybody doesn't win a prize. If you're lucky, you get sales on the phone for 15 minutes or a web call for 15 minutes to launch your product. Instead of new project, new t-shirt, you can buy your own t-shirt at Cafe Press. We, we just upload a logo and say, go get your own shirt. Samples, samples, free samples? Now they're sold. Mr. Customer, buy one, you'll like it so much, you'll come back for more. Web surveys, web coupons, less expensive. Web-based monitoring tools, how are we doing all over the internet? Social media, we do campaigns using social media now. So why do we do this? Anybody know why this evolution has changed? Is it because we're enamored with the technology as marketing people? New technology, you gotta grab it, gotta use it. Do more with less. Do more with less. It, it might be about, is it about the budget? Yeah. It's new technology, it's cool. We wanna play with it because it's cool. Web coupons, that's a lot more interesting than talking to a, a printer and a sales guy and having a coupon made up and physically distributed. Old days, even the laptop is old days. There have been advances in technology, right? Email, web seminars, conference calls, web surveys, all these things are great, but why are we doing them? We do do more with less. Some people think we get the word out faster. You can get the word out same day now instead of putting a stamp and an envelope and mailing it. Several days later, our prospects get it, they think about it, it goes in the pile, they look at it a week or two later, and eventually, if we're lucky, they might make a phone call. Now, we hit the send button, they get it instantly. Is there value in that, though? So that's the crux of the discussion, so hopefully no one's in a post-lunch coma now. You've had a chance to digest lunch a little bit. How do these advances in technology impact our sales? Is it just cool stuff and we're doing it because it's interesting to us, or is it making sales more predictable, more reliable, more frequent, better somehow? Is it better the old days? Yes, Mr. Allen. Thank you. I think there's two, two sides. One is how does it impact the sales organization? The other is how does it impact the influence of sales and the buying process? And, and both of those are different. So you want to take that and run with it for a second? Sure. Does it help your sales organization to spend time in their home office printing off literature for their next sales call as they're doing their pre-call planning? Does it make them more efficient? It's more efficient for us as marketing people back in the office, but our customer, the sales force, does it make them efficient? Is it cheaper for the customer to have a remote salesperson on an expensive little laser jet or inkjet printer printing something off singly? Is that really cheaper for the company? 
than if we use a printer and print a thousand of them to mail them out. Any other examples? Yes? I think it's still garbage in, garbage out. If your, if your messaging isn't right, it doesn't really matter how you deliver it, it's still not going to, it may not be effective. So uh, all of these topics are about how it's delivered and not as what is delivered. It's a good point. What is delivered? Is it the same thing being delivered, just in a different format? It could be the same message, but is it the same message? Or at the same time, we're in such a high rate of speed with social media and getting messages out on Twitter and whatnot. Does that mean that we're losing some of the content and we haven't collaborated with our colleagues and gotten the messaging straight? We're in such a rush to get things out the door. Is it better? Or is it the technology? And is this really saving us money? Let me throw another question out there. We, in the old days, we did these live lunch parties. Did that help sales? Was that money well spent for us? I see a couple of head shakes now. So are we giving anything up by eliminating those launch extravaganzas, those big parties? We're giving up potentially some awareness unless we have other ways of generating that awareness, right? There is value in the face-to-face -face aspect of those parties. You know, that you're with your customers face-to-face. -face. You can talk to them talking about things other than just the product you're building a relationship. Are any of these cool new tools replacing that face-to-face -face that we might be losing because we're trying to save money? Yes, yes. Do they replace with the same value, the same impact, the same end result for all of us who I think was more sales? Depends on the preferences of your customer. It does depend on the preference of the customer. You bring up an excellent point. If we know our customer, we're trying to save money by emailing a PDF to the customer, yet the customer is a senior level executive who's nearing retirement age and is still a little bit afraid of his computer. Was that such a smart thing to do? We need to really know our audience. And while this technological innovation is cool that we can get it to them instantly, may not help advance our sales process and our product adoption rates. So how else can we save money yet still make money? Was anybody in that session earlier on personas and understanding who your audience is? So if, if maybe as part of that persona development, we add a component of understanding that customer from the perspective of how do they like to be communicated with? Do they understand Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Do they read blogs? And how can we better reach those people? Another thing about that is um, as your email and all of all the other ways of communicating with you become cluttered, several of us in the PR field have gone back to the old days of sending a, an interesting box that has something in it. It doesn't have to be expensive, <coughs> but it gets open because you're not getting that kind of mail anymore. Or a double-sided giant <coughs> postcard, which is not that expensive to because you see it immediately. And if it's, the content is interesting, the pictures are great, you know, that person doesn't have to open an envelope or just throw away the envelope that never got opened. Have you done any analysis of the results, how effective that is? Not yet, but that's the next step. Okay, great. Because I bet, because to some people that's new and different. If your target market is Gen Yers, they may not remember the odd-shaped Packages right, coming right. in the mail. Exactly, it has to be the right, the right. But I think, regardless, it needs to be measured. It needs to be analyzed to find out does it work, and does it build awareness? Does it build sales? Does it reach your goals? Does anybody still do trinkets or contests or make up T-shirts like the product camp T-shirts you've seen around today? Anybody? Do they still work for your company? We send a master's care package to uh, several CFOs and CEOs in our industry. It's the highlight of the year for them. It's the highlight of the year for them. That's awesome. Does it make them call in? Does it make them buy anymore? Or is it just an awareness builder? What's the goal of it? Uh, to continue to develop that relationship and have a kind of special in them. I, I would say if you ask our chief client officer, it's extremely important to what we do. Excellent. What is there? Uh, 
In a previous life, I had a CEO tell me, we're gonna do less with less. <laughs> I thought about that, and I asked her, it was a woman, I asked her, what's your sales goal? Well, sales are gonna build by 10%, it's in the plan. It's in the budget. Really? So you can do less with less, Maybe you're planning on winding down the business. Maybe you're refocusing the business. So you can do less with less, but if you decrease your marketing budget and you have expectations of increasing the results, what's the chance of that success? I, I know there's one data point what the result was for this one company. They downsized the company. They had to get expenses in line with revenues after trying to let's do less with less. So while this technology might be new and different, it's one thing to redeploy your, your marketing dollars, but just to think you don't have to spend money on marketing, you can just do social media campaigns, could be short-sighted depending on who your target market is. Anybody have any experience with these? Do these things save money? Can you just tweak your way to sales revenue increases and new product launch awareness? Has anybody had success with it? It's a pretty good sample size in this room here. Is everybody shy? Can you hear me? And then you see any hands go up at all for can you have success with it? Did you have success with it? Yes. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, basically, I work for um, ATDC, it's a technology accelerator. And last summer, we decided to change the strategic direction of the organization. And the director walked in on Monday and said, we are going to do this in seven days. So as a result, we really didn't have any choice but to do anything with social media. And we basically successfully launched it. We increased the number of customers that we had from 47 to 361. That's awesome. And what's, who's your target customer? Um, entrepreneurs that are starting com um, companies in Georgia. Okay. And did you have a price increase as well? Uh, well, no, we didn't have a price increase. What did you do at all as opposed to the ego? Uh, we charge people for four. Great, thanks. <coughs> it's not a personal experience, but I know of like food trucks in California, that they no longer advertise that they just use tweets to tell customers where they're going to be and what their specials are. So, you know, it's working great for people like that. We're offering an interesting budget. I'm sorry. Like food trucks, like you know, those little trucks. Oh, food trucks. Yeah, so, you know, they've got really small budgets to operate with, so it should work for them. So perhaps it works in a consumer goods environment. Many of us here are having products to deal with technology, are B2B related. Anybody have any B2B success stories of using some of these less expensive, newer technology methods? It's, is it possible that we gain value, we learn from each other, but in terms of increasing revenues, we may be saving money because we're not printing direct mail, we may be saving money because we're not traveling to trade shows, but is that helping our bottom line? So what techniques do increase sales when we launch new products? Who's had a successful new product introduction and had a technique that worked well for them? Did I see a hand over here? Are you stretching or did you feel? Yeah, this is a bit ridiculous. A, a shock that it works, but um, we, we've often gone to trade shows and seen very little value. Uh, out of actually going there. And just, I don't know if it was out of frustration or boredom, our CEO decided it, it was around Thanksgiving time, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and dress up in a turkey outfit and go around <laughs> and, uh, and uh, hand out little things if you stop by our booth and get to spin what we call the wheel of meat, which <laughs> said, hey, you, know, you get a ham, you get a turkey, you get a, a bologna sandwich, whatever it is. Um, but is that kind of just like absurdity that, uh, uh, just appealed to people there. We, we got a lot of traffic, but what was even better was we actually wound up, it was one of the, the few trade shows we went to where we actually wound up leading to some sales. It was just that out of the box, certain <laughs> level of thinking. Being a friend. Being a friend. Yeah. 
out of the box ideas usually do work, especially for our PR friends over here, because it gives them something different to talk about. And it helps spread the word about our products. You have to be careful with out-of-the-box ideas, though, because you don't want to be seen as, oh, that crazy company that dresses people up in costumes. So you have to know your market. And you have to know that your market has a sense of humor or understands what you're trying to do and doesn't just view you as some crazy outlier doing something unique and different and strange and odd. But it's a great idea. I'm glad that worked. Any other ideas of new product launch ideas? Sure. I had a European client.
Well, what we found is we'll be able to figure out not only who in these different organizations is collecting this information, but if they're all sending them to like a similar director or something, then we can take all those results that they've given us for free, run it through our model, and then go find that person in the organization and answer, like our salesperson can say, here's an answer to your problem. And that guy didn't even know how we even got there. Um, just so that's sort of free, but the cost to the person receiving the information is their contact information. Yep. So they're raising their hand, and I'm sure many of us have done that, maybe to get a discount at a store or a restaurant or something as well. So yeah, I'll give you my email address in exchange for a five or ten dollar coupon or something. So that turned into a fairly qualified lead for you, I bet. Well, like I said, we haven't quite pulled the trigger on it, but that's the that's the theory is we'll have some pretty well qualified leads because our model's very accurate. So. So there's some value in, in getting those qualified leads. That's great. Any other thoughts? Yes. There was a really interesting article two to three days ago. Um, at a blog called Software Bar Rob. And basically what he did in this article was outline why free plans don't work with a number of specific examples of issues that people are having with free plans, including 37 signals, MailChimp, and companies like that. So I think it'd be interesting if people aren't thinking about free to go read that thing. What's the website? Software Bar Rob. Great. Yes. Well, I'm just looking at the last one. I mean, in terms of what techniques to increase sales, and I, I'm seeing, I, I read an article too about how, you know, social proof and how you use internet technology to um, show endorsements by existing customers. So it starts to build that rating chance of people who can sell for you, that, you know, and, and give incentives to those people for being fans, that that's really, you know, in terms of where is technology working positively to help build those Um, I know there's no better way to improve sales than that. 
Um, particularly, no better way to improve crew sales profitably, which I think is one of the key things. And long term. And long term, yes. Mm -hmm. Could you create repeat customers? Who is more believable, us as company marketing folks, or our buddy that we're sitting next to at dinner some night out at a restaurant that tells us something? So if we can create some raving fans and have them promote the company for us, very effective. Other ideas? Yes? I think the overall uh, topic, uh, I know I've read it recently, uh, it's called social proof, is a concept that uh, you know, is widely discussed. I know, I believe it was Mark uh, Seuss, who's got a great uh, venture capital blog called Both Sides of the Table, discussed it recently. And I know he included a reference to, I forget the guy's name, but uh, the book's called Yes, and it's all about like persuasion. Um, and just to your point, uh, all about acquiring kind of testimonials because those will speak volumes compared to just some you know person who's a just a random person that has nothing to do with the company. Great. Has anyone tried talking to customers that are happy and saying, "Could you tweet about that? Could you blog about that? Could you help us to create some more random fans?" <coughs> How expensive would that be to do? Maybe if you're willing to help us, next time you need some of our products, we can work on a deal with you. So maybe we take a little less revenue at some point in the future, but in terms of immediate marketing expenditures, probably little to none. We can even write some talking points for them and suggest it to them. You have to be careful that certain lines you don't want to cross, but we can help them to clearly articulate our message so they don't go too far off the topic. Yes? It'd be interesting to see if that's something that, that doesn't require a legal hurdle like a traditional you know, customer story or case studies and stuff like that. It's a lot easier to post something and tweet something about uh, a very successful activity you've had as, as, a, as a customer versus you know, running through a legal hurdle. Especially with the FTC's new rulings, it's going to be but if you receive anything from an organization of value, you have to disclose that. Mm -hmm. If you receive something of value from an organization, you have to disclose that. That, that could potentially, if you're influencing those raving fans to, to tweet or to blog on your behalf, they may have to disclose that, depending on how that's done.
Goldman Sachs made money on it too. And you obviously, you know your target market. So give some thought to who is your target customer, what's their persona, and what's their equivalent of the makeup counter at Saks that had float their boat, where maybe you could have an event that'd be a win-win for both the venue and for your business. Great. Yes? One of my clients is a beautician who has just opened a salon in Roswell, Georgia. And her specialty is Brazilian waxing. And I don't know if you all know this, but Brazilian waxing, you don't look for that service provider in the yellow pages. It's very much word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the women but, knew it. Yeah, the women <laughs> probably know that. So what we wanted for her was something that she could give to her clients, that her clients could use to give to someone else to enhance or to be more intentional, intentional about the word of mouth. So we created a really sassy little business card with a little bikini on it and a little torso that pulls out with some of the options. If you're not familiar with options in Brazilian, you can Google it. I'm not going to explain. <laughs> but it's a, it's a sexy, cute little, it has a tactile movement or some kinetic element to it that makes it more than just a plain business card. And the reaction we saw was, this is so cute. <coughs> and men seemed to like it too, but we didn't let them have any of the cards. <laughs> so again, by, by knowing who your target customer is and what their personas are in those businesses, you're able to create something compelling for that audience. Did you have a question? I was just going to say for B2B, we found out you know, we had a new product launch this spring and we identified all the customers, but then we took a step further and said, who are our customers? So we contacted them, got them all the information they needed. What they ended up doing was telling our customers that they had to come buy the product from us. But we invested a lot of time with those two entities to make sure that we really understood the problem and helped them and convinced them that we had the right solution. So they basically pushed it top down to our customer base to the point where sales was getting calls from XYZ Bank. Hey, I was told by my relationship relationship manager Fannie Mae to call you. So and that we really didn't spend a lot of money in marketing the product. But if you would Google undisclosed debt, I think we're still 18 of the first 20 search clients that come back. And that was definitely a big thank you to the two entities that we spent a lot of time investing with educating them on our product. That's a great tip. In a B2B environment, who is your customer's customer? And can you create some pull for your product by reaching out to those grandchild sort of customers. Great tip, thank you. Other questions? Yes? I don't really have a question, but um, I'm very, very, very small startup, and I started making jewelry, and a liquid hotel asked me to, um, they were having an event, it's called Fashion at Five, so they said, will you come to the event and show your jewelry, and so that's what I did, and I called it my launch party for the jewelry. And it was great for both sides. I helped promote the hotel. The hotel helped promote me. Um, they had food and drinks. You had to pay $10 for specialty food and cocktails. But it also gave me a lot more legitimacy that this hotel was working with me. So it was good. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. It was low cost. No it cost. It gives you <laughs> credibility by working with a partner. Well, spend what they wanted to spend. It was very low cost for you, right? Yes, yes. I, I don't even think I paid the $10 for the drinks. So <laughs> it was great. Even better. Even better. But again, because you know your audience, you were able to design an event that was compelling to them. That if you didn't know your audience, that might not have worked so well. Yes? Um, I recently launched an, an ebook and. Uh, the American Marketing Association is partnering with me to create a series of podcasts that is a companion to the ebook. And what they're doing is we're providing them with content, but they are distributing it to their membership within their newsletters and so forth. So it's giving us expanded reach from the book. And it's a win win on both sides. Great idea. A lot of the people here I know are in smaller businesses. You can choose how you want to define small. Depends on your perspective, really. But if you can partner with a larger complementary sort of business to help get the word out, that could be a very cost-effective way of building your business, along with added credibility. Great idea. Other
ideas? I got like so many good ideas for a product launch out of shoestring from, um, I was at South by Southwest two years ago and a uh, guy who wrote a book called The Worldwide Rave. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you like it, don't like it. Uh, but I, I just, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about ideas, I think I can. <laughs> Wait. So, um, I mean, I'd recommend that. I was a good source of ideas. What was the book called the, again? The, the, worldwide, world? the Worldwide Rave. The Worldwide and, uh, Rave. And it, and it wasn't just about social media, but it taught me how to do some things with um, like YouTube videos and some other things for product launches that I, you can do for so low cost now with like flip cameras and it just, it, a lot of these ideas wouldn't have occurred to me, but they're practical and they, uh, they work for product launches. So I recommend that. A lot of these low cost marketing ideas around new products tend to start with very small companies, very kind of frantic, fast paced environment. They have no choice. How can they get the word out? It keeps them up at night. So a lot of the creativity starts there. And for those of us that may be in larger organizations, more structured organizations, even B2B type of organizations, can look at those ideas and adapt them somewhat, maybe by spending a little bit of money, or perhaps by just targeting them better to our own audiences, and create some, some very compelling messages to help build sales. So I don't think I promised you at the beginning I was going to have all the answers for you, but to help facilitate a discussion where we can get out some of the, the things that have worked amongst all of us as a group. So I appreciate your for coming. Thank you very much.